my personal recommendations regarding entry-level HEMA equipment. Hello HEMA friends and welcome to this new video. Today I want to share with you my personal point of view about what to buy while approaching HEMA in terms of training equipment. This list is especially focused on longsword, but with the great exception of training weapons and gloves, it works well for the majority of weapons. This selection of equipment will feature a number of good to well-performing training tools which go from cheap to average prices, with a few exceptions. Anyway, by watching it you will also learn that in HEMA sometimes the best tools aren't necessarily the most expensive one. I will also follow the most reasonable order in which, in my opinion, you should buy your equipment to start training as soon as possible. So, first and foremost, let's start by your sword. Here I will talk about longsword, so if you are interested in other weapons, just skip this part. Now, there are many options while searching for a good training sword. I had the chance to try out a ton of different swords, so here I'll present you the four best options in relation to what you may be in search for. The first option I am going to present you is the Sigi feather. This is the standard feather made by Sigiforge and it is a very good choice for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, it's really safe, meaning that it flexes really well, which translates in safe thrusting. This feature is extremely important as people tend to compensate their thrust in many different ways while not using a safe enough weapon, which translates in bad habits and poorly performing thrusts. In addition to that, this sword is pretty handy and it offers a variety of possible customizations, some of them free of charge. The price for the basic model is 300 euros, which is the average price for a feather nowadays, whereas if you do not like shields, you can go for the Sigi sword, which is basically the same model but without the shield. While being the most expensive among the options I am presenting you in this video, the Sigi feather is probably the best investment while talking about entry-level training swords. The second option I am presenting you has been the first feather for a great number of HEMA practitioners around the world during the last 10 years. I am talking about the Regenye feather. Now, the most important feature of this sword is its price. 250 euros is definitely a price below average. Nonetheless, while being relatively cheap, this feather is still a good and a reliable training tool. That's why it is so widespread. Average qualities in terms of handling, safety, durability and aesthetic. The Regenye feather is the best option to start on a budget while at the same time buying a tool which is good enough under every aspect. It is the workhorse of entry-level training swords. Notice that to buy a Regenye feather safe enough for thrusting, you should not, in my opinion, click on the standard feather option presented on the website, because it is too stiff. Instead, you should click on uh, custom feathers and from there build up your own feather. Here you can select medium while choosing the blade strength which is good for every kind of training activity. Do this and you will save your training partners from many, many accidents. By the way, you can also vary some aesthetical features for free by selecting custom feather, making the sword more appealing to your personal taste while not spending more money. The third option is the Kvetun feather. Now, this feather nowadays costs slightly lesser than the Regei one, 240 euros, and uh, by my purely personal point of view, it performs a tiny bit better. So, theoretically speaking, it may be a slightly better entry-level kind of option, but unluckily, because of the war and all the related events, ordering a single Kvetun isn't the best because uh, of uh, shipment fees. If you live in the US, most probably the shipment fees of all the makers I listed will be similar. But if you live in Europe, the difference starts to be irrelevant. Anyway, if you order two or more feathers, the price instantly lowers, so it is ideal for club orders or for a group of friends which starts together. The Kvetun feather is an alternative to the Regenye feather to start on a budget. Similar performances and similar price. Ideal if bought in pairs or more. The fourth and the last option is the Black Fencer Steel Generation Standard Longsword. 
The price of this sword sits around 260 euros, which makes it being relatively cheap. The main feature of this sword is its shape. It is a trading sword which looks like a sword while being relatively safe at the same time. I say relatively because the tip is quite narrow and even if the flex is pretty good, it definitely asks for a rubber tip and uh, for something in between the two, so that the tip doesn't thrust through the rubber at some point. This sword is good for all those people who are more focused on uh, working by the book with a tool which resembles a real sword, without sacrificing too much safety while doing so. The sword comes only in the 125cm version, which on one side blinks an eye to historical swords in terms of dimensions, but at the same time makes it shorter than the majority of feathers out there. This is neither good or bad, but definitely something that you have to keep in mind. The Black Fencer Longsword is the best option for all those people who want a <coughs> sword-shaped training sword. An entry-level training sword which fits the most nerdy kind of Hima practitioner. Very good. So, the sword took some time because it is by far the most important choice you have to make. Let's move forward with the second most important piece of equipment, the mask. Now, let's start by saying this. Fencing masks are expensive, period. And considering that it is the thing that protects your face, I would advise you to avoid trying to spare money on this specific part of equipment. That said, let's see the options. The first and also main option I am going to present to you is the All-Star Coaching Mask. There are two models available, not considering the CE1 350N, which is not good enough for what we do. These are the Coaching Mask and the Comfort Coaching Mask. The difference, which for some motivation is not explained there on that part of the website, you have to go on the standard EP mask to find it out, is that the Comfort one has removable padding while the other has not. All Stars makes really high quality masks. Many of my students use it and keep using them and I always advise for this kind of mask because they are both sturdy and safe. Pretty good way to invest your money as it costs around 150 to 160 euros, which is an extremely competitive price considering its quality. This is most probably the best mask to start from period, because it is both affordable, well made and extremely sturdy. The second option I present to you is the mask I am using right now, the Leon Paul Exchange Coaching Mask. Now, this mask has one huge pros and a series of little problems which compensate it. The pro in question is uh, its uh, suspension system. The padding inside of the mask is made in such a way so that your face sits a bit more far away from the mesh than normal. If you are now to Hima, you have to know that the famous waffle on the face is a common injury that happens every now and then. This feature basically solves this problem while not modifying the shape of the mesh while doing so. The tiny problems I mentioned are first and foremost its complexity. The suspended padding system has many parts inside. Rivets, straps, sewings. Every now and then something will fall apart and you will have to fix it. And in addition to this there is the rubber band. The Leon Paul rubber band is tiny and it falls apart in a matter of months. Luckily for you, they sell spare parts. <laughs> yeah, luckily. Anyway, despite all these tiny issues, this mask is a remarkable one and uh, its special padding system will save you from many little injuries which every other mask can't completely save you from. That's why I decided to add it to the list. And luckily, it costs a lot, £227, so you have to consider all its pros and cons before buying it. At this point, you should buy what I call the Hima underwear. I am talking about the plastic chest protector, which is always good to wear underneath your jacket, both for men and women, and of course, the groin protection. Here, I do not have any precise advice to give you, if not for where to find everything together. Websites such as PBT Historical Fencing, Purple Heart Armory and the Fate Darm are ideal to buy these protectors all at the same time. On these websites you can also find the other products listed on this list, such as the Courgette for example, 
which may be a good way to spare money on shipping fees. Moving on to gloves, we have three different options. The first option are my beloved sparring glove mittens. The sparring gloves mittens are still, by now, the best compromise between mobility, protection, price and durability. There are other models of uh, sparring gloves, but in my experience the best one is still the basic model. Despite what it may look like from the outside, the sparring gloves mittens let you move the fingers inside of the glove, which give you enough mobility to handle your sword properly. The thumb is well protected and uh, the dimensions of the glove are inferior to other bulkier gloves, which is a layer of protection in and of itself. Their durability is unluckily only okay. Depending on how much you fence, they will tend to fall apart in some years, especially on the wrist. Taking care of every damage in time will otherwise elongate their life substantially. The price is extremely competitive, 160 euros for standard measures, but I always advise to add 10 euros to get the custom one, as in my experience, the more the glove fits you, the better the protection is. Also, take in consideration the elongated calf version for additional forearm protection. The second option are the relatively new Xyphosura Kvetun gloves. These gloves have uh, several pros. The first one is being made of plastic while being relatively small. They are half away between the sparring gloves and the Space Lobsters. They offer higher protection compared to the first one and a slightly smaller profile compared to the second. Also, they are only made on uh, custom measures, which is another interesting feature which I definitely put among the pros. They have otherwise some little issues. The shape of the thumb decreases a little bit the feeling on the sword, which makes them shine a little lesser to my eyes. Anyway, they are certainly a very good option. The price is 210 euros, which is a good price for the kind of product they offer. The third option are the Spess Lobster Gloves, which I mentioned before. These are the slightly lesser appealing choice to me, but are definitely a choice to take in consideration. Spess Gloves offer a formidable protection for the four fingers and the back of the hand. There is no other glove which protects so well in these terms. The tip of the thumb used to be their weak spot in terms of protection. While now has been almost completely fixed on the standard model, it is still the spot where sometimes people get minor injuries while using this kind of glove. A series of new versions of the lobster gloves came out lately. All these new versions seem to completely fix the thumb issue they had before, with a solution similar to the Kveton gloves. And luckily I didn't have the chance to try them out for now. The main problem I personally have with the lobsters is related to their bulkiness, which if on one side is the price they have to pay for the kind of safety level they offer, on the other it makes you being hit on the hands more than what it would normally be with any other glove. Anyway, despite their little weaknesses, they are extremely comfortable to wear, even more than the other gloves listed, and they offer the highest level of protection for the hand. The price starts from 189 euros for the standard model and gets higher for the new ones, which is in line with what their product offer, in my opinion. Now we have the Goget. Well, luckily, this is an easy one. I am a huge sustainer of minimalistic gorget, because you do not need more than that under your jacket. But unluckily, there aren't a lot of options out there following this idea. The Arsem Mini Gorget is a good example of what I am talking about. It offers good protection and it's tiny enough to not bother you. But there is plastic on it, which may or may not require some adjustment depending on the shape of your jacket and of your mask peep. Anyway, if you don't want to go for the second option, it is the best choice out there. The price is 32 euros by now. The second option I offer you is not a single one, but actually a series of options. The Gorgé such as the PBT, the Red Dragon, the Duhima and other similar ones made in this way can be easily modified by cutting and sewing the additional protections slash stabilizers so to make them fit underneath your jacket in a comfortable way. I still consider this option the best one, as an unfitting gorget is something extremely boring. The prices of all these products vary from around 25 to 55 euros. 
Talking about the jacket, this is the only time in which I will give you only a single product as an option, and this product is the standard AP 350 Newton made by Spass Historical Fencing, now called the AP Plus after the latest improvements. So why only the AP 350? Because in my opinion it's the best compromise between price, protection, mobility and by my point of view, aesthetic. I say compromise, but the AP Plus is far from being an average jacket. I still consider it the best jacket out there, and it is one of the best investments in terms of him equipment you can do right now. The price is 222 euros for the standard model and 237 for the custom one. Moving on, we have elbow and forearm protectors. Now here it greatly depends on which kind of gloves you ended up choosing before, if your choice ended up being sparring gloves mittens with elongated cuffs, which I greatly advise, you will be able to complete everything by simply buying Spess shell elbow overlays for 22 euros. This is not only the best combination in terms of safety in my opinion, but also the cheapest one at the same time. If you go for the other gloves options I listed above, you'll have to buy some kind of forearm protectors. I personally advise two of them. The first one is the Pro Set Forearms and Elbows combination made by Spess, which is lightweighted and relatively cheap, 39 euros. It's all plastic though, so if the opponent blade just scratches you, it sounds the same way as if they got you properly, which may be boring sometimes. The best alternative combination, in my opinion, is light forearm overlays plus shell elbow overlays. Everything is made by Spess, again. The obtained effect is similar to sparring glove cuffs plus Spess elbows, which is a very good combination, as I already mentioned. The price for this combination is slightly higher, 22 for the elbows plus 34 for the forearms. The choice is up to you. Notice that I only listed Spess products, not only because they are good and uh, convenient to buy together with the jacket in a single order, but also because you'll be sure that they will properly fit over the AP jacket. Moving forward, we have the mask overlay, which is another easy one. Masks overlay aren't a big deal as soon as they protect the back of the head and they add weight to your mask, so to mitigate impacts, they are just fine. A good option is the Unity Mask Overlay, which I personally use. It is made by Spess, so it is convenient to order together with other products. There are a couple versions of it, one in leather and the other one with eco leather and 800 Newton puncture resistant materials. I personally prefer the leather one over the other, but it's just personal preference. Both are similar in terms of price, which is around 75 euros. Another interesting product made by Spess is the Trinity Overlay. This may be good for whoever wants additional neck protection. I used one of those for years and then I switched to the previous model in the list. As uh, with a gorget on, this additional protection isn't necessary and I personally prefer to have lesser stuff on while possible. Again, the price is around 75 euros. Almost every other overlay around is a copy paste of one of these two models and they are generally just fine. I personally advise Spess ones because I know the quality of their products and uh, also because they are convenient to get in a single order together with other protectors on this list. Moving on, we have padded fencing pants. The best option by now are, in my opinion, the Husser Hima pants. Very good protection compared to other models and the suspenders arranged in a smart way. The second feature may seem not important, but believe me, it is. <laughs> the cons are higher price compared to the other models, 155 euros, and the fact they tend to be warmer, mainly because of the increased protection and the 800 Newton tissue. They are also slightly heavier, but nothing relevant in this sense. Anyway, these are the best pants out there. The second option are the Locus pants from Spes2, lesser protection than the Hussars and the suspenders arranged in a not so great way. But they are cheaper, 115 euros, more fresh, which is always good, and the protection is enough in most of the HEMA environments. I'm actually still using these pants, I consider the Hussars better, 
but the lockers have definitely some pros, especially when the weather starts to get warmer and you want to keep up with your training. Their suspenders are actually their main issues, you have to keep fixing them every now and then as they tend to slide down. Please spare guys, if you are watching this video, put the Husser suspenders on the locker pants, please. Anyway, still a good choice for the pros I mentioned. The third option are the Red Dragon fencing pants. Good suspenders arrangement, the protection is average, basically similar to the locker pants. They have a set of straps to better arrange your waist, a couple of pockets where you can insert the Red Dragon knee protectors, which are two pretty useful features, and they are also cheaper than the other pants, around 90 euros. The cons are slightly lesser quality of the materials and the sewings, and uh, well, they are red fittings. I mean, only if you don't want them being red, of course. I also want to mention the Duhima Combat Knickers by Black Armory. They have a very good price, 95 euros, they look good, but unluckily I don't know them. So not really an advice, but more a keep an eye on them, read some reviews, take them in consideration. And finally, knees and the shins. Now, here there is a huge variety of options. You have to decide if you want to go for separate shin and knee protectors, or buy a single jointed protector for both. And you have to consider which pants you wear to. Anyway, I will list some options which I consider good or viable. First of all, if you decided to go for the Red Dragon pants, you can buy their specific knee protectors which can fit into the pants themselves. It is a convenient solution which also offers some additional protection on the side of the knee, which is always good. Again, talking about knees, if you buy spare pants of any kind, you can add their specific knee protectors, namely the shell knee overlays. I personally use a combination of locust and the shin knee overlays. The protection is good, the only problem is the side of the knee. You have to add something there to prevent those strike from unlucky angles which tend to happen once in a while. The best shin guard options if you go for the specific knee protectors I listed above are the Grace G600 hockey shin guards. You put them underneath your socks and that's it. They may feel weird the first couple of training sessions, but then they became, at least for me, pretty comfortable to wear. Very, very good protection, cheap price and almost eternal durability. The price may vary, but it's generally around 25 euros. If you want a set of jointed protectors, well, in this case I can't really advise you a specific one. There are plenty of motorbike, downhill, hockey and similar activities shin plus knee protectors. There are also some refitted or even specific Hima ones. The problem is that they always have some issue. Weight, shape, too complex joints, not long enough shins, etc, etc. Definitely there are some interesting ones out there, but I am not aware of anyone in the specific right now. I am a huge sustainer of separate shin and knee, lesser problems and easy to modify if needed. Very good people, we are at the end of this huge list of equipment. I hope you will find this video useful, especially if you are starting HEMA right now. Remember that if you want to support the channel, you can do it through my Patreon, link in the description. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.